often when it comes to revising and reviewing the material for a course, you'll be going back through and wanting to collate information from lots of different notes pages together. So the focus of the flow today will be on how we can make that process of collation more efficient. And by making use of atoms, you'll be able to jump back to the original source of information in your sources or your notes to gather further context and make sure that you've got the information correct. So if you're new to Protolis, we make use of atoms. And that's the term that we use to describe the snippets of text, like your highlights, annotations, the golden nugget of detail within your sources that you want to be able to relocate quickly and use. And to create an atom, you highlight the text and then you select this capture atom button. And what that does is lift the piece of text out of the page. So this highlight now exists as its own element within your workspace. So you'll be able to see and access it without needing to be inside this page so that you can lift all of those important details out of all your sources and start to group them together. So when you've captured an atom inside a page, if you had a lot of information, you can always view those atoms by opening up the atoms menu where they will all list here. Or if you're making use of tables to organize your pages and information a little bit like a folder, if I jump up to the table level, you'll see that by using an atoms property in your table, you'll be able to view all of the atoms that have been collected in this page. And then there's a few other things that we can do with atoms, like adding connections so that they display in multiple places in your workspace. And I'll get to that during the workflow. Okay, so for today's workflow, we're going to make use of a table as a folder to house all of your lecture notes. So I'm going to add a new page using the plus button and choose table type and then give it the title of my course. And then all tables automatically add two properties, atoms and subpages. So I'm going to set this up so that each row of the table are my lecture notes. And a lot of courses will have information that they want you to review before you turn up to the session. So we're going to use the subpages property to house all of the different learning materials. So I'm just going to upload the slides for this lecture into this property. It will upload and appear. So I can open up this lecture one page and I can choose to make it a text editor so that I can type my notes into it. And then if I open up this pages menu, you'll see the slides appear here. And then if I control click, that will open up the slides next to my notes page. I can close this menu. So as I'm reading through the information prior to the lecture, if I come across anything that I think I'm going to want to take note of, I can highlight it. As I showed you previously, this capture atom button will appear, but I'm actually going to drag and drop the text into this notes page. And as I've done that, a citation has automatically been created. So whenever I'm reviewing these notes, I can click on that citation and it will take me back to the highlight in my source. And in this case, the slides. So I can continue through the notes, dragging and dropping information from them into my notes page. If there's anything I come across which I need to go look up elsewhere to get a little bit more familiar with, I can also add those sources into ProtoList. And I can open up the Pages menu in the Notes page again, where I had the slides sitting, and I can choose to add a new page. And because I've got a URL, I'm going to choose Website. And then I can paste the URL, and it will import the content from that web page into my workspace. So I'm just going to get my Lecture 1 notes open again so that I can drag and drop the atoms in. So as I come across the information that I want and need and want to refer to, I can drag and drop it in as before. So I can continue working through the slides, taking notes, adding in further information that I might gather from other places into my notes page. And then when I go to the lecture, I can add to those notes. So I might end up with something that looks a bit like this. And so now I want to generate some kind of summary of what is contained in these lecture notes to help with navigating all of the information further down the line. And to separate out the summary atoms from our notes from all of the other atoms, we're going to make use of tags and atom filters. So the eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed that I've added this key concepts page. And we're gonna use that as a tag to organize the summary atoms from our lecture notes. So if I jump back into the table, which will have all my lecture notes in, so what I'm gonna do here is choose atoms, and then I'm gonna add a filter of key concepts. And this column will only display the atoms that we have tagged or linked or connected to the key concepts page. So if I open up these lecture notes, and because this page sits in a table, we can actually see the properties of that table when we are in this page. And this becomes very useful to us. We can make use of that filtered atom property that we just set up. So we've got all of the atoms here 
which is all of the odds and ends from all the different sources that we've pulled in alongside our notes. And now we're gonna capture some atoms which kind of summarize and perhaps pull together all of that information. So you can go through your notes and again, highlight the text that you want to include as a summary atom. And again, we're not gonna click capture atom. We're going to drag and drop the atom into our filtered atom key concepts property. And what that is going to do is create the atom and also add that key concepts label to it. So you can go through and distill out all of the important concepts from your lecture notes. And your atoms can also contain other atoms. So where in the text that I've highlighted, there are already citations because there are other atoms in that chunk of text, the citations have been preserved in the atom that I've captured. And so now when I go back to my neuroscience table, you will see that there's a list of all of the atoms that I've captured or added from these sources into my notes page, as well as the atoms that I just distilled and captured. And then I've got the list of just those atoms that I captured as key concepts here. And if I go to that key concepts page, I will also have a list of all of the atoms that have been labeled key concepts. So over time, as I take more notes and create more of those key concept atoms, I will build a list of all of the key concepts from all of the lectures here in this page. So when I finish all of my lectures, I can create a crib sheet here in this page. And to do that, I can set this up as a text editor page, and then I can open up the atoms menu and all of the atoms from across all of the lectures will appear here. Anything that has been tagged key concept and linked to this page is gonna list here. So I can select them all, and drag them into this page. So I now have all of the key concepts from the entire course here in one page. And the citations will allow me to jump back to where those notes are in all of my notes pages. And any of the citations that were inside the atom will allow me to jump all the way back to the source that I used to add that information into my lecture notes. So by organizing your key info as these key concept atoms, you can very easily pull all of the most important information from your entire course together in one place. And then our citations and source linking system will allow you to jump back to exactly where you need to be in your notes to brush up on that information. We've also got a Cornell Notes inspired workflow that makes use of these connections, again, to pull all your summary info together. You can check that out here.